All right, welcome to and welcome back to iHeartRadio Canada today, hanging out with Blake, George, and Reese. It's the boys from New Hope Club. Hello. Hey. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank um, you for having us. First, I'd like to hand you these. Um, oh. I thought I would put myself in the group. <laughs> oh, wow. um, that's so good. And give you oh, a, f- that's a, nice one. a fourth that's a member. That's a really nice one. That. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you free on the weekends? Yeah, I could do weekends. Can you play yeah. drums? Um, do you know what? I used to actually play really? drums at school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, That's perfect. Good. This one looks real, kind of. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I like this. If you'll have me. That's good. New yeah, you're in. Images. You're in. Daft ass twice. The new New Hope Club. The mm-hmm. new. There we go. So <laughs> we recently just came out with a song. We. Um, we in fact, two. A double A. You've yes. released a few of these now. Is this kind of your thing? Is, or is it just because you have so much music, you're like, how can we get this out <laughs> the fastest way possible? I mean, partly, we, we haven't released music in a long time. We were just like, we had so much stuff we wanted to get out. But also, we're massive fans of um, old music. And anyone who's followed us for a while would know that. We just love like the idea of how it used to be, like with r- releasing a record and it having an A side and a B side, and usually the B side had a different feeling or a different sound to the A side. I think, like especially with the first two double release that we did with Getting Better and uh, Girl Who Does Both, you c- we really wanted to show like the you know the opposite ends of the spectrum of of what we could do on the album, like one being upbeat and and exciting and kind of dancey and then one being more mellow and a little bit more Simon and Garfunkel vibe. Um, yeah, we just wanted to show that, what what we could do, do you know what I mean? Do you have a favourite of uh, Out of Lush and uh, and Walk It Out? like, Or is it just depend on the day? Definitely dependent on the day. We've only played Walk It Out live. We've not played Lush properly yet live, so I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to playing that one. Um, but Walk It Out goes down crazy live. Everyone gets so excited and yeah. hyped and sings it because it's kind of like a shouty rock like kind of rocky song we wrote walk it out not that long ago so we usually always enjoy and and like the songs more that we write recently because we, we've not we wrote all lush on uh zoom so oh, lush yeah. was a zoom session proof that zoom sessions do work they do actually <laughs> work yeah, yeah. Um, that's amazing yeah i don't know it depends on the day doesn't it, it yeah does, definitely does yeah. i'm a big fan of lush la, la, thank you la, la, la. Hey. so good you're like i'm just whistling it all day i thank love you. it oh, it's so good cheers. um do while you're on stage playing drums for us exactly yeah, i be, i know i know it all off by heart and everything, <laughs> so i'm ready to go um a music video and a lyric video just dropped for that for lush is there going to be another one as well for um for walk it out yeah there's going to be a walk it a walk it out music video coming soon um but we wanted to get the lush video out first um because we only we shot that one a couple like about a month ago now and um, yeah, that was we had a lot of fun on set. And fun fact, the guy who was doing the dancing in it, he wasn't meant to dance at all. He was just gonna walk around like, you know, like admire the space and kind of. He go, also oh, wasn't meant cool. to talk. He wasn't meant to talk, but he was like, "I've got a couple of lines for you." We're <laughs> yeah, like, he just, he no, just it, came it, in and he was like a ball of energy. He was amazing. amazing. He's even more prepared than I am. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, 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 exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, he wasn't meant to dance, and then he was just like. Do you want me to throw a few moves in there for yeah. you? He was great. Be I like, was like, uh, yeah. Before uh, I heard him talk, I was like, whose dad is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish. Yeah, yeah, no, he was We great. had to cut so much of what he was saying. Cause oh, really? He was like, he was like swearing. And like, yeah. it, was just, it was so funny. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, well, congrats on, uh, congratulations on the release of, of those songs. And um, is, is it safe to say that this has been your most productive year yet? Or has a lot of this stuff been done on Zoom calls in years previous and in lockdown? Were you, were you mostly busy then? It's like it's been like a like a very busy two and like two and a half years because yeah. like once lockdown hit we'd like literally only like just turned to you know writing and producing because we'd spent five years touring so it was a bit weird you know that transition from non-stop to stopping so we just kind of threw ourselves into the deep end of writing this new project and experimenting and yeah it, it's taken a lot of like progression of like figuring out what we wanted to be you know and it's just come from through experiment and having fun and it's really exciting now the songs are coming out you know because we've we have sat on them for a little bit now so it's yeah. like you start getting to the point where you were like we want to start the next record you know what I mean? yeah um, um and was it safe to say that you had probably spent the most time ever apart in lockdown or were you all in the same bubble oh yeah i mean the first couple of months like we went back because we were met we started off at the start of the pandemic in america and then we flew home and we went to our like parents houses for a couple of months 
was lovely to see them, but after a while, we're like, we just want to kind of crack on. So we were apart for like four months at the start. Which is definitely the longest yeah. we've been apart. Yeah. Crazy. Um, but then after that, we just like got together in the same households and, um, you know, we were doing like the whole bubble thing. I forgot how it works, yeah. but <laughs> like uh, we got in the same household and was just recording wherever we could. Um, and yeah, we were doing like such weird stuff like we had to turn a couch upside down to make a vocal booth and stuff <laughs> like we were just we were kind of like a machine we were just writing songs every day yeah um but it was really it was so enjoyable like we were just enjoying it for the first time in so long kind of felt like we were back at school like we just get the work done during the day and yeah. then like we'd do a zoom at night and then do another song and then the morning we'd wake up and record that song like it was just great it was like a workshop that's awesome. Yeah, you're making me feel so unproductive. I was just playing FIFA for a long time. <laughs> like we were well, playing FIFA. Okay, well. good, good, good. At least we've I'm had a few flights since then, so we've been playing FIFA a lot. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'll add you. I'll add you. We'll, we'll get a game going. <laughs> yeah. Um, TV too. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you were writing a lot of that music back in the UK, and then you recorded it out in LA. Is that right? A lot of it, or yeah, a mix. A bit of a mix, really. We had. I mean, we were. We literally produced it just ourselves, so we were able to like travel with the productions you know like usually when we have a producer it's a bit difficult to like you know keep working on the song because then you've got to go find the producer and find time for them so we kind of just everywhere we went we're just adding to the songs like some studios would have drums in and we then had like live drums on some of the songs so then we do some of the drums in england or some of the you know since in la it just kind of all pieced together yeah but i'd say like the last two months of the process was in LA and that was the main like finishing stuff. Okay, nice, yeah. nice. Um, and let's talk about touring and getting back to playing live shows again. Do you remember the first one after after lockdown and getting out there? It was yeah. in England. Acoustic. No, it was, it was the, oh, no, the it tour, wasn't. but where was no, it? It wasn't, was yeah. it like Brighton? I think, or yeah, Bristol. Brighton, Brist no. Bristol. Oh. It was Bristol. Obviously, it wasn't that memorable then. <laughs> <laughs> we just played a lot of shows since. Yeah. Not going to lie. It was no, it, um, I, it's just, I don't know, it was weird. There was like a weird vibe, I think. I think the crowd also was like unsure. This. Everyone's like confused about, you know, it was just as soon as like live shows were allowed to happen again. We were literally like the first, one of the first artists to go back to touring. So we were all just kind of a bit, you know, what can we do? What can't we do? How I close think can we get still, to people? It's still getting back to like mm -hmm. normal. I think it's mm -hmm. definitely um, a transition to get back to where we were. But like touring's our favorite thing to do. Obviously, we love it. We literally just did a tour of America and Asia, but we didn't add in a Canada date. And we got a lot of complaints. Yes. We so we're going to have to come back and That's do it. That's why we've got you in here. We're, we're, we're <laughs> locking the door until you agree to one. Um, let's talk about um, the response that you've had and the reaction and the fan base that you have over in Asia. That that just blows my mind. It must blow yours as well. You have to get used to that, going over there and getting that response. <laughs> no. It's so, sh yeah. I mean. Just because it's so different to what we used it to. Is, it is. We, we turned up there the first time and we, like, genuinely didn't know if anyone would know who we were and we turned up and um like the the security doors opened when we just got our bags and there was just like the loudest scream ever like a wall of screams and we were like well, is that that's for us and then the doors opened again and we screamed and it was like that's crazy and we went out and there was hundreds of people with masks on of our faces <laughs> like it was a bit surreal yeah. like everyone was like <laughs> staring yeah. at us with our faces um but and just like since then they've just been amazing over lockdown they were just so just so on it and then our song did really well know me too well over there and then since then you know we've, we've been back we've done a headline festival there which is our first ever headline slot and i feel like it's yeah it's just going it's going wild we love it that's amazing. Is there a favorite thing that you do when you're you're not working, when you're on tour, when you're traveling? Is it like food? Is it just we're big football or? fans? So oh, we, right. we try and get a game in. If yeah, we can, but try and get a game in or go watch a game. We've yeah. been to like we've watched a game in Argentina, um, which amazing. was. Crazy a couple of years so ago. A guy run up a wall when <laughs> they <Yeah>. score. <laughs> really? Run up a wall, he picked me up, swung me round. I was a bit like, oh no, oh no. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. yeah, we tried Was that? That was Buenos Aires. Yeah. yeah. That wow. was that was River over. Plate. Like the atmosphere, because yeah, it's River so Plate. different everywhere you go. 
like the atmosphere is just crazy. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to try and go to like a hockey game or something. Here. Oh, you got to do it. Like anything we want to this sport. weekend. We're going to keep dropping it in until yeah. someone gets us tickets. Yeah. And yeah. If, if you don't someone. see someone. <laughs> Would you take the hint already? <laughs> <laughs> all right, good, good. Yeah, it's so been all morning. We've been sort that out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, Blake, I've got to ask you about the movie, uh, mm-hmm. Midas Man. Yeah. Um, been working on that. Obviously playing Sir Paul McCartney. That's uh, that's a yeah. hell of a role. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> you, uh, you excited about it and, and the response that you've received? so far yeah yeah really excited i mean it's uh, like i mean i did a tweet when i was like 17 that said like um if i'm ever to be in a film i want to play paul mccartney and then it happened and so it's all been kind of manifest really Mm. really strange but yeah we're the biggest beatles fans in the world and so it's an honor obviously to play it but a bit of pressure yeah but yeah it should be good. I feel like there's there's so much loyalty in the group and and the fact that you stuck together and survived the pandemic and whatever. Because I'm sure there was probably like a bit of a crossroads moment. But that moment in itself, when you found out you got the role, did it feel like a win for the group, not just you? Hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like Blake said, we're such massive Beatles fans, and I think if anyone's to play Paul McCartney in this group, it's the is is Blake. Yeah. I mean, we've been kind of like practicing for that we're all all our lives we're huge fans so um yeah we've been studying that group quite a bit and it's, yeah especially paul for boys yeah. yeah we used to like play pranks on uber drivers like when we were younger in america we used to just say oh this is paul's grandson <laughs> and then he's like, oh no way <laughs> that's amazing so to actually do it is yeah. crazy i'm looking forward <laughs> to watching it yeah. every time it comes on i might do like a proper beatles fangirl less scream when you come on you better at the premiere <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shall we do it? yeah yeah but also pretend like you don't know him who is that guy? <laughs> we'll, sit, we'll sit apart yeah. that's amazing you'll um, sit with paul yeah i wish yeah holding hands manifest that just tweet it and it'll happen yeah exactly yeah. there right. you go tweet it. um wait to do that do you play guitar right-handed or i play right-handed yeah which i'm a bit annoyed about you know because i actually write left-handed same. And so I do everything else on my right. Yeah. yeah. And I just think like if you'd have just started, if I just started off, left-handed, left, yeah. if I just was bought that guitar, I would have been left-handed. You're it like, would have made my life so Mom, much Dad, easier. What were you thinking? Yeah, I, know. I mean, yeah. Right. Clearly, there were signs. Yeah. But no. Yeah, it's been all right. I mean, it's obviously I've got the knowledge, so I'm like trying to translate it to this way around, but it just doesn't work that well. But I'm getting there. At least it's bass. It's not like acoustic or a lead electric or something. Well, best of luck with that Thank project you, and best of luck with all the brand new music. We can't wait for the album. I hear there's going to be about 20 songs on there. Is that right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's wow. going to be a lot. I need to I need to free up some space on my phone before <laughs> you drop that one. So, I know. I just discovered good. iCloud recently. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I've just discovered it. So Yeah. Uh, when are we thinking time frame wise? Uh, probably early next early year. Early next year. Early next year. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Great way to kick off 2023. We can't wait. Thanks so much. Thanks. New Thank Hope Club. Where are we you. going next? Now I'm in the band. I mean, where, where are we off to now? <laughs> we're going, uh, I think we're going to Mexico now. Yes. Perfect. So yes. book your ticket. All right. I'll book it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys. See you later.